Good day, Tinkercad friends. I've got an amazing project for you today. I'm going to call Tinker Bugs, and I want to give credit to Muzz64 who made these awesome bugs. Uh, I asked him for permission. He said it was cool if I made a Tinkercad version of the bugs. So if you're making this with me, make sure you name your file Tinker Bugs, and let's start by bringing out a box, making sure that we're looking at it from the combo top front view, Pressing W for the work plane and attaching the work plane to the front of that uh, box. We do that because it brings out the round roof almost in the exact direction I want. Once you've got your round roof out, click on the box and delete it. Press W again and get your work plane uh, so that it's back to normal. And then lift up that bug's body until it's at zero. Let's take the flip tool and flip it so the bug's belly looks like that. And let's change him. Uh, he's 10 by 20. Let's change his height to 10 as well. When we press enter, I'm going to use the view cube to switch to a combo uh, view. I want to do duplicate, which is control D, to make the head and the body. And then I want to cut out the body. And I'm going to do this by doing control D or duplicate. I'm going to zoom in and grab the new one. I'm going to use the cool fit view view to selection. And I want to change it to six millimeters in this direction. And I want to change it to 16 millimeters in this direction. So what I did is, is I subtracted four from each side. And then I'm going to make it a hole. And then I'm going to grab both of them and align them and center them and center them. And now when I group them, I have got the awesome body of the bug. I'm going to line that up with my grid. So I'm on top view and I've got it to one of the zero marks. So it's at zero, zero. And I'm going to bring out a box and I'm going to rotate this box, which is a whole box. I'm going to rotate it 30 degrees. Notice if I'm inside, it snaps to 65, 40, and so on. I want to get exactly 30. And then I'm going to bring this box down, and I'm going to cut off past half. So here's the 10 millimeter mark. I'm going to cut off past half. I don't really care what happens out here in front. I'm going to just cut open past half. You can see when I grab and I group, I have now got a nice slice where we're going to eventually attach uh, the head. At this point, I want to line up these two points, and I'm going to do that with another box. I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to also slope it to 30. And this time, I'm going to put it up here so that there is a gap inside, but they're lined up pretty much on that uh, line right there. Grab them, group them. And just like that, I've got the back of my bug. Okay, let's build this awesome little jaw pieces. Bring out another box. And we want to change it to be 2.5 millimeters thick. And we want to change to an angled view so we can see that we're adjusting the height. And we want it to be 2.5 millimeters thick. We don't care how long it is because we've got a cool trick later that will let us slice it. We do want to rotate it 30 degrees. You'll notice that is a common theme. Um, if I get it to 30 degrees, then I'm going to nudge it into place. I'm going to get it as perfect as I can so it lines up with that front edge. But I want to make sure, and you can see I'm looking at it from this side, that it does not uh, poke out that uh, top edge. I'm going to use a cool trick to shut off the grid for a minute. And that lets me move it uh, a little bit more precisely. I love how smooth that is. I'm going to turn my grid back on to the one millimeter mark. This time when I do control D to duplicate, it lets me lift it up and I can lift it right up to that smooth edge right there. Uh, it did not line up perfect, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the bottom two that are perfect. And now when I select the top two, I can use a line and align that top one. And I can group that, and now I've got my bug's jaws all in place. Let's do a moment's worth of work on his head. 
Uh, once again, I'm going to line the head up with a zero. I'm going to bring out a box. I'm going to rotate it 30 degrees, which we've done more than once already. And I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to make sure that when I cut his head, I've got at least a one, two, three, four millimeters at the bottom. And then when I group it, I've got a head that I can put in place. I'm going to actually ungroup that quick and I'm going to move it one more millimeter to the left. So I've got closer to five millimeters. We'll bring it in place. And then I've got to slice off uh, three millimeters. So I've got room for teeth later. Drop that in so it's got three millimeters and group. And now I've got my little bug's head in place as well. You leave a gap between these. Notice I've left one millimeter space. So that way my bug is going to be able to move when we squish it when we're finished. At this point, bring out another one of those cubes, make it 2.5, go to that angle view again, so we can make sure we click on this one and make it 2.5. And this time we're gonna use a different rotation. This time we're gonna use 45. When you've got your 45 in, we are gonna raise it up a little, and then we're gonna grab all three of those pieces, and we're gonna align them in the center. Now what was sweet about that is it gave us the perfect gap for our little piece that uh, came in. I got lucky and lined this up on the first try so that it comes right through there. You may have to adjust yours a little bit. Uh, it is not poking out the front so now I can grab everything and I can group it and I have already built my awesome bug's body. I'm gonna take my bug and I'm gonna hit W on the work plane. I'm gonna bring out a large box and I'm going to use this to cut off those little leg stumps that we don't need. Grab it, group it, shut off work plane by pressing W and clicking anywhere else and take a look at how quickly we have created our bug. Now we just need his bottom jaw, eyes, and all the fun stuff that make him look like a bug. All right, friends, let's wrap up our bug by adding his bottom jaw and some teeth really quick. Start by bringing out your little cube and we know that we want it to be one millimeter thick in this direction and we want it to be 10 millimeters high and this is easier to see if we do the combo uh, top front. And then we can just bring it into place. You can real quickly uh, line them up by getting it close to that location doing your align tool and we want to align the bottoms. And then let's shut off the grid super fast and let's zoom to the size of it. And that lets us take this one piece and use the black handle to get it so it lines up exactly with our design. Notice it's also wrong on the up and down. So let's select it all again and center it this way as well. So now the parts are aligned. I'm gonna switch to my front angle and I'm going to use the uh, black handle to shrink the jaw down so it's the right length. And then at this point, let's group that all together so it's one big piece. Let's add some amazing teeth to our little buddy here uh, by attaching uh, roofs to the bottom jaw. When you hit W, you can set the work plane to B. Uh, that jaw. I'm going to set the little tooth close. I'm going to tell you that the smart measurement is two millimeters this way. Change that height to 10 millimeters so it'll fit. Press enter and then we need to make the tooth one millimeter high. Make sure you've got your snap grid back to one millimeter. I'm going to shut off the work plane for a moment by pressing W and clicking on the blue. I'm going to grab all of those pieces and I'm going to do a line and I want this little piece to be aligned with the front and I want it to be aligned vertically as well. I'm going to grab my whole project and make sure it's at zero millimeters because it just adjusted. 
And now I'm going to take that first tooth and I'm going to do control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to nudge it back to that side uh, so it's ready to be the next tooth. So just tap, tap. Because it was one millimeter, that tooth is lined up. I can do control D again and it automatically memorizes it. I'm going to take my three teeth and I'm going to group them. So I'm just clicking the first tooth, holding shift and clicking the second tooth and the third tooth. And they're going to just get grouped. And then I'm going to do control D to duplicate that. I'm going to use the arrow key to move it to the left two clicks. And then I'm going to use the amazing flip tool so that those teeth are pointed down. When I do a one millimeter move and I go one millimeter back to that side, my teeth are all nine lined up and have a nifty little gap between them. I'm going to grab that awesome project and I'm going to group all of those. This little fella is totally printable at this point, but I want to add cool things like eyes and all the other features that make the bugs more special. I'm going to make my eyes out of a sphere. I'm going to grab one corner and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to shrink that sphere down so it is three millimeters thick. When you get closer to the small measurements, sometimes it's easier to hit fit view and then go back to your corner and hold shift to get it to the size you want. And then you can simply move them into place using your arrow keys. And then lifting them up. I'm going to pull mine out one. And then I'm going to do control D to duplicate it. And what's so cool is you can just grab the little uh, move tool and move it where you want. Just like that, I've got nifty little eyes. I'm going to pull this one down one chunk. And I have now got a bug with eyeballs. You can add smiles, anything you want, but now it's up to you to see how epic you can make your creation. Thanks for watching. Hope you had fun with the bug. Hope you use this strategy to make other cool bendable items. And please like, comment, and subscribe.